finish this Venus and Virgo through the houses, y'all. Let's see what our love language is going to be fixed like this next couple of months. going on family let's get into this venus and virgo let's finish up these houses all right we got patreon gang in the building stone cold sagittarian soul in the building all right body botanica i i know that said for i i know that ain't just i know that name ain't pronounced regular like bori but i know that's that body botanica i know it got a little but gotta get that you know that little lingo in there a little latino lingo in that body <laughs> Mind below me. All right, Uyo Kiro. Yo, y'all not missing no lives. Mind below me and Uyo Kiro ain't missing no lives. Shout out to them. Stop playing. Spiritual development is high priority over there. Disha Baby 8. All right, Unruly Tongue. Unruly Drake Voice. Madas. <laughs> Natalia Carmel. All right, Exo Geneva. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. Alrighty, time to wrap up this Venus and Virgo through the houses. What we got? We got the fifth house. We got the fifth through the twelfth house, guys. Fifth through the twelfth house, all right? Viva la eels. That name is fire. Viva la eels. Helen B in the building. All right. Crystal seven. I see you, Crystal. I see you. I see you. I definitely see you. Narzai. Narziri, excuse me if I pronounce that wrong. 4LMB in the building. We got big aqua energy in the building. All right. We got that full moon in Aquarius. That's your energy. That's your energy, 4LMB. All right. You better be all up in your in your vibes. All right. Chechi, that's who I was waiting for. Y'all know it ain't alive until Chechi get up in here. Y'all know it ain't alive until Chechi make her way in here. Boni Botanica. All right. Organic Lexi, Felicia 5. All right. We in the building. We in the building. So look. Venus and Virgo, guys, uh, when we have a new transit with Venus, it's a new perspective of how we got to deal with our love at the moment, guys. How we have to deal with how we receiving feelings and how we giving them off, guys. And the more we understand what this Venus, what this Venus and Virgo vibration is, the more we'll be able to correlate with how we deal with our feelings, with our love, how we're able to receive love, how we're able to understand love in a more with more clarity okay so as i was breaking down in the first half first live i didn't get all the way halfway I, I stopped at the fourth house i was outside my phone was dying but when we looking at uh venus and virgo the most important things we got to understand is anything that hops into virgo is dealing with reality because it's earth all right and it's also going to have a high critical uh emphasis on it all right a high critical analysis emphasis on it because it's ruled by mercury so because it's venus going in there when it deals with our love who we're connecting to our relationships our emotions these are the things we are now highly critical on and being influenced to work on all right guys now, that's the thing about Venus in Virgo. Venus don't like to be in Virgo because Venus wants to be in a place where her love can flow, her feelings can flow, she can connect to her pleasures, she can exchange the feelings and emotions with others, with other individuals. In Virgo, she's being influenced to love working, to love routine and schedule, all right? To love putting things into a regimen, to love hitting the gym, to love meal prepping, to love getting proper rest, to love being more conscious of what you put in your body, to love what you, to love your priorities dealing with work and career, to love working on your business when you get home from work and you're already tired and you got to sacrifice that extra hour to build your dream up. That's, that's what Venus and Virgo is influencing us to love and appreciate right now. Now, that's the thing. When Venus gets into a new house, into a new sign, she brings love there because she is love. So she brings love. She brings support. But the more we know how to love in that area that we have Venus uh, Venus transiting, a.k.a. the house we have Virgo, the more we know how to love there, the more we know how to self-appreciate or appreciate the area or, you know, appreciate how we love the area or support the area, then we just in more alignment to extract 
to receive or attract more support in this area. All right, guys? So by default, Venus brings that there, but y'all have to understand, this is like an esoteric cheat code. If you know Venus is in this house and you know it's bringing love and support here, the more that you work with it, okay, like I'm not gonna, the more you don't rely on the universe to bring the love, to bring the support, to bring any type of blessings, all right, to bring any type of advantage to this house, the more you act like your know, universe, I don't even, I'm not even gonna act like Venus is in this house. I'ma just, I'ma just bring the love here. I'ma just turn it up a not what uh, turn it up a notch with how I work on this house. Alright? That's when you in super alignment. That's when you in super alignment. Okay? So we starting with the fifth house, picking it up with the fifth house. So Venus in the fifth house, this is my Taurus risings, alright? This is my This is my Taurus risings. Put my phone on, do not disturb. So when we're looking at uh, uh, Virgo in the fifth house, all right, Virgo in the fifth house. This is my Taurus risings, all right. So Earth in them in them in them fire houses, you know, y'all got to think about it. The Earth houses are dealing with expression. So when you put Earth in there, it's just like looking at it. You could look at it two ways, guys. Either you're gonna, it's a campfire. You could throw. The reasonable reasonable amount of earth in the fire, the campfire to build it up, a reasonable amount of wood into the fire to keep your fire creativity alive, more stable, or you could just throw a whole bunch of rocks in the motherfucker and put it out. This is what earth earth rising signs are doing. I'm an earth rising sign. I know all about suppressing my creativity because I feel like oh no, it ain't ready yet, or I gotta work on it some more, or I gotta stabilize it some more, or or I don't have the money to work on my creativity, or I don't have the resources, so Earth rising, we got to be careful of that. Okay? We got to be careful of that. You don't want to suppress your creativity. And when we look at when we look at Virgo in the fifth house, we know Virgo is highly critical wherever it's at. So Virgo in the fifth house is going to be really critical of how it deals with creative expression. When it comes to how you write your music, how you deal with the stage, how you present yourself to the world, how you creatively express yourself and forms of entertainment, Virgo could be very critical of itself and how it deals with these energies in this house, okay? It's going to be real detail-oriented, move with strategy and tact when it comes to their music. When they end up in the studio recording, that Virgo in the fifth house, y'all seen the Tupac movie? Any the Tupac movie, it wasn't that. I guess it wasn't that blown up. But if y'all if y'all remember that Tupac movie, anybody seen the Tupac movie? Y'all seen the part in the in the beginning of the movie when this is when early Tupac when I think he was when he still with Digital Underground and he was working with the engineer and the engineer said some shit like like I think it was just Tupac and the engineer in the studio and the engineer said some shit like yeah yeah I think it sound good and Tupac was like motherfucker we not leaving this studio till you get that shit right. That's Virgo, in the fifth, that's Virgo in the fifth house. It's going to make sure, it's going to critique the fuck out of, its, out of its own art, out of its own creativity, okay? So, not only do you have that, that mentality in the fifth house, you, you got a debilitation of Venus here. So, sometimes you may lack appreciate, appreciation or support for your own creative endeavors. You may not appreciate what you could creatively bring to the table. So with Venus sliding in here, she's going to, you know, inflate you with some of that. It's time to add more support to what you creatively work on. It's time to add some more love, you know, into that pot. You y'all can't be cooking up shit with no love, man. I could tell the difference between a, a meal that was made just just quick and the and a meal that was made with love. And when you got Venus in that fifth house, when y'all cooking up y'all art, when y'all cooking up what y'all want to creatively express to the world or how y'all want to express that stuff, sometimes the overthinking could just could just ruin a couple of things here. Could have the most creative song in the world, most most creative uh uh goddamn poetry in the world. You feel me? You you could be the one of the best actors in the world, but you highly nervous and shit when you going into this audition and shit or whatnot. You bringing all type of insecurities, all type of things that did not happen yet, and you bringing all that shit into the audition. Like, but you, but you, you the next Denzel, you the next Will Smith. Like, you gotta chill. So Venus is doing that in this house. It's getting you to appreciate and support what you creatively bring to the table, Virgo or Taurus risings. Okay, and I know how y'all Taurus risings move. Y'all some slow and steady mofo's. Y'all slow and steady is y'all game. 
people is fooling themselves trying to rush y'all doing anything personally. So y'all take y'all hella time in your firehouses when it comes to expressing anything in that first house, fifth house, and ninth house. And when it gets into this fifth house, you want to make sure you use your critical analysis for how you deal with your creativity in a positive way, in a beneficial way, all right? So with Venus transiting here, you got to learn to love and support this area. You got to learn to be more in tune and let things flow with your creativity here. You also have to appreciate and support expressing yourself, period. Period. Just expressing yourself, letting people know what's up, letting people know how you feel about things, letting people know your thoughts. This is not a time to suppress that when Venus gets into a fire house. She got to find, she's, she's finding pleasure. She, she need to find her pleasure. And in the fifth house, she's going to find her pleasure making sure she's expressing her goddamn self, especially in the creative realm. I like to say that fifth house also deals with having fun. It rules entertainment. Not just entertainment that you like to jump into. Not how like you like to entertain and creatively express uh, yourself to others, but also how you uh, how you like to be entertained. All right, how you like to socialize, how you like to get out in the world. So right now, y'all kind of do want to embrace being a little out and about during Leo season. But for everybody, it don't matter what, where Venus, where Virgo's at in your chart. We got to take care of priorities. We got a full moon in Aquarius to start the season. That's just letting you know we got to be stable first before we jump into any type of goddamn festivities. Or well, we're going to be ending Leo season going into Virgo season. <laughs> Y'all don't want to go into Virgo season not taking care of responsibilities and priorities during Leo season. Y'all don't want to do that. If you if you don't want to do that, you do not want to go into Virgo season. That season already deal with responsibility. That that season is already dealing with us reflecting the summertime and you know seeing how we could work on things more efficiently before we go into the fall season. You don't want to just be slacking on everything that's important. Slacking on your schedule and regimen because Virgo season gonna really, gonna really smack you up on the smack you in the face. Something crazy in the beginning of the season. Something crazy. You gonna have way more responsibility than you want during Virgo season. You are gonna be cleaning up your house way more than you than you had to. Esoterically speaking, spiritually speaking, because you done lost your mind, Leo season. You got lost in this, the solar plexus. You got lost in how you wanted to be seen. You got lost in how you wanted to express yourself. You got lost in the light. You feel me? So I ain't saying don't deal with the light. I ain't saying don't jump into uh, energies dealing with expressing yourself. But man, uh, we got to make sure priorities, responsibilities taken care of. Saturn, st we still dealing with them retrogrades, aren't we? All right then. So, you know, a lot of y'all have been, since Saturn on these planets been retrograde, a lot of y'all been... Finding so much clarity with how you build in stability in your lifetime, how you making money, what transitions you making with business, tightening your schedule overall, learning to value time more often. Okay, not just more often, but learning how to value time, period. Okay, so you know, people are seeing the benefits of it, or people are feeling like their back is against the wall because they're not exercising and practicing these things. And Leo season, you know. Saturn is Saturn is retrograde in Aquarius, so Leo season. These energies is opposite. We've been dealing with Mars and Venus being opposite Saturn and whatnot the past month and a half. So how many situations did y'all have to have discipline with learning how to manage your time before you wanted to do it? with this type of energy? There was a lot of things in the past month and a half that y'all couldn't do because y'all had to take care of responsibilities, or you realize you fucked your time up. You like damn, I can't make it. I can't make it to this event. I can't make it to this party. So you could even dive into some things with Mars and Venus and Leo with as passionate and as much love as we had to deal with, you know, the outside world entertainment. Saturn was being a bitch in a lot of situations the past month and a half. Saturn was fucking up, was, was being a, 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 is a party pooper. Party pooping like a motherfucker the past month and a half. So at the end of the day, though, if you've been using Saturn... You know, if you've been using Saturn to prioritize things, you actually in a state where you don't even care about that shit. You don't even care about the events you miss. You don't even care about the, the fun you may see people portray having in social media. You don't even give a fuck about that shit because you know what you're working on. You know what you're stabilizing. 
you know what you're investing time into and you're understanding what uh, uh the significance of what's going to be reciprocated with you putting time into something all right so yeah my taurus rises guys i gotta learn the value which i creatively bring to the table learn to let your learn to let your creative expression flow more and say shit with your chest this next uh these next month and a half with venus in that fifth house don't let people play your form of creative expression or your expression period okay you're gonna manifest all type of circumstances, people, places, and things to influence you to love how you deal with your creativity, to love your music some more, all right? To love what you creatively do some more. You already naturally highly critical with Virgo here, so that ain't going nowhere. That ain't that's that's your life. That's your life, period. You know, you trying to it's earth though, so you always trying to see you have a realistic approach with how you deal with creativity, but there's a thin line with creativity and reality. It's a thin line. And that thin line is is it gets blurred when reality starts to suppress our creativity. Creativity is not something that we we think about so hard. We creativity is raw. It flows. Comes from the imagination. Some of the best songs that we that artists could write is shit that just flowed. They just caught the beat and it just boom. It just flowed. The pen just went. The hook just came. So it's not something that they just. Some some signs, you know, some masterpieces, you know, they had to take their time and write it out and shit. But for the most part, a lot of artists, a lot of the a lot of hits is being made like that. Like y'all would think some of the most y'all would think some of the biggest songs in the world was some shits that would took a minute to write. Some of the biggest songs in the world came like this. Came like this. You feel me? A motherfucker heard the beat. Caught the flow, caught the vibe, connected some memories, some experiences, and some of their thoughts and emotions with the vibe, and then the hook was there. Boom, they got the hook. Boom, now they just got to fill in the verses. Song done. Song done. Billboard. <laughs> you feel me? So, uh, if a lot of y'all that make music, y'all already know the vibes. You feel me? Y'all already know the vibes. Now, so that's what we're dealing with, uh, Venus, transiting that fifth house, and then, you know, the fifth house deal with connecting, too. The fifth house deal with connecting too. You feel me? It has a little sexual influence in there as well too, because dealing with creation. So you know, Venus in the fifth house, things might get a little spicy for y'all during this next month and a half. Y'all be safe. Y'all strap up and all that. Y'all move wisely with how y'all connecting with other individuals. Cause Saturn, cause think about it, Saturn's gonna be the opposite. Saturn's opposite Leo. So it's like if you dealing with somebody and you dealing with high temptation, a lot of pleasure right now with Venus transit in your fifth house, but you feel the restriction, you feel like you gotta, you can't just jump into that pleasure or that, or you know that uh, fantasy or what you're picking up on, and you need to put more time into the relationship. Align with that vibe. Align with that vibe because you're gonna make a mistake trying to jump into something too quick with Venus in the fifth house. Venus get amped in that fifth house. Venus gets very amped in that fifth house. For some of y'all that got Venus in the fifth house or Venus in Leo, y'all already know the vibes. Y'all already uh y'all get y'all get amped when it comes into how you want to express yourself or when people playing, playing playing your expression, or you feel like you ain't being heard or seen, you could see some dramatic shit. Forget a Leo Sun Moon Rise, and you ever seen a Venus in Leo person not feel like they not getting heard or seen? You ever seen that type of drama? Venus is a little girl. Venus is a is 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 a she a young chick. You feel me? She a teenage girl. She could get dramatic in in Leo like a motherfucker. Dramatic as hell in the fifth house. All right, guys. So we just want to make sure that you know you guys are making sure you remain in the present with how you deal with your creative endeavors, but you're willing to support how you work on your shit. And be careful not being overly critical uh, uh, in this area because Venus wants you to flow some more with your creativity. Now, Virgo in the sixth house. Virgo in the sixth house. This is my uh, Aries rising. Dramatic as fuck. Y'all tap into Libra intuition, man. Y'all make sure y'all tap into Libra intuition. So Venus in the uh, Virgo in the sixth house. Virgo in the sixth house. Now, this is my Aries risings, okay? Aries rising. So Virgo in the sixth house, this is the house it's birthed in. So it's already naturally influenced to have a schedule, have a routine. Aries risings, they uh, could be ahead of themselves personally. So when you got that Virgo in that sixth house, a lot of shit that you're into got to get slowed down, be more strategical, more practical. But a lot of times Aries risings, they're developing a, some type of routine, some type of schedule earlier in life. 
early 20s they're already like kind of stabilized in some type of shape or form a lot of the time aries risings are finding ways to be stable even if it ain't from their dreams or the things that their, their dream job or whatnot but they they getting stable though aries risings kind of get stable pretty quick so when we're looking at virgo in the sixth house you know you highly critical in the right area in the area dealing with your schedule in the area dealing with your routine aries rises don't like people playing with their time not only are they learning how to deal with time management, they don't like playing people playing with their time. So they got that double shift there. So now with Venus trans coming into the sixth house, we already know Venus don't like to be in Virgo, but Venus don't like to be in the sixth house. Venus don't like to be in the sixth house. Okay? The sixth house deal with routine, scheduling. Somebody dropped a question. Venus and Scorpio 11 house. Yep, we're going to get there. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, oh. Venus and Scorpio 11 house. Okay, yeah, yeah. We, I'm going to probably be able to take some questions after I get through this. I just want to make sure we get through the houses real quick because I did the first couple of houses earlier today. So that Venus in the um, transit in the sixth house. Sixth house deal with schedule, routine, the workplace, how we work on things, what we're working on, health, regimen, okay, your diet. And when I say regimen, I mean, you know, what you put in your body the type of rest you get in, how you treat in your vessel, what is your regimen? How do you how do you you know make sure your vessel is good? How do you make sure your nervous system is healthy? All right, we figuring all of that out in the sixth house. So when you got Virgo here, you could have a you can have already an active nervous system with Bur with um, uh, motherfucking Virgo here, Mercury ruling your sixth house. But for the most part, you're analyzing in the right places. You're analyzing things that's dealing with career. You're trying to see how you can adjust yourself in career. You're trying to see what resources you have. You're trying to see who knows who so you could build here. Virgo's mutable, so Virgo don't mind learning from the external realm, learning from others. If anything, they're the master researchers. They're the master researchers. But that's what suppresses uh, Virgo's creativity a lot of the time. They're trying to research shit instead of letting their creativity flow like they opposite sign Pisces that ain't doing no research for shit. They just doing it from the they just doing it from here. They just doing it from here. <laughs> but Virgo's gonna research some shit. Vir Virgo's gonna get informative. So that's not that's not to say that that's negative of Virgos, and that's not to say it's negative what Pisces is doing. That's just what they doing. They both that that shit both plays out negative and positive for both of them. Okay. So with that with that uh, Venus transit in the sixth house. You being called to appreciate and love, you know, what is it that you're choosing to work on? There may be some things, Aries rising, that you know you want to work on. You 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 got this career, you got this job, but you know you're trying to transition into this. It's an earth house now, so it's a lot of career influence. So you know you want to transition into, you know, this business or you want to build up your brand or your side business and you haven't been on it. Perfect time to shoot Venus in the sixth house. Venus in the sixth house, you need to get busy here because you're being influenced to value and support yourself when it comes to working on them things without somebody else having to do that. You know, you going to work, clocking in, you being at a place you don't want to be, you need to use Venus transit in your sixth house to be like, all right, you know what? Let me have a positive mindset of what I'm doing right now temporarily to keep myself stable, but let me move some appreciation and some of my effort and devotion into building up what I really what I want what I, what I would like my schedule to be besides going to work. I really want my schedule to be me just working on this all day and getting paid for this. I promise you if y'all ride that wave during this transit, you're going to be in a different space or have so much progress once Venus is out of Virgo, once Venus is out your 6th house. But that's what Venus in the sixth house has to learn right now. Okay? That's what Venus in the sixth house, if you don't align with that energy, let's say you're in that situation, you want to work on something inside, you're trying to build business, you're trying to navigate career a certain way right now, you got certain plans, you haven't you haven't exercised them yet, you haven't got them into your schedule, you haven't found a way to work on them yet. The more focus, the more you don't focus on these things and just let it float a little bit. Venus in the sixth house is gonna be very frustrating right now. Because that's the form of pleasure Venus finds here. It finds pleasure with the routine. It's already in Virgo. It's already sliding into Virgo. So now it's double dose for you, Aries Risings. It's in Virgo and it's in the motherfucking sixth house. Okay? And with that Virgo in the sixth house, uh, you know, Aries Risings, y'all can be work horses in the workplace. So it's like y'all can be in the company and y'all can be doing a whole lot there. And y'all get to points where y'all realize like, damn, yo, I really wish I was exerting more of this energy into something I'm into. Like, I work hard with whatever I do. Aries going gonna, Aries gonna to go head first. It's the Ram. They're going to go head first into everything they do. 
but for the most part, it gets into them earth houses, and it's like, damn, it start getting a little frustrated when it start realizing I've been putting in so much time going hard for this person, for this company, for this job, for this motherfucking boss. So yeah, Venus in that house wants to start learning to work on something that actually appreciates, it actually does love. If there's something that you do love, this is the time for you to find a schedule and routine for it and stick to it. All right, make some sacrifices for it right now. That's going to make Venus very happy. That's going to make universe support this area even more. We got to learn this. This is with anything in life, guys. This is with anything in life. You got to learn to support your damn self to receive any type of support. My mother is highly religious. She's OD Christian. And she was telling me something of a couple of days ago about like one of my cousins, like the niggas on, he living an outlaw, outlaw life in Nigeria, some shit. And then like, he's just doing a bunch of reckless shit. And then she was like, yeah, you know, they're doing a lot of prayers for him. You know, I got to pay the pastor what not to do this prayer for him. Boom, boom, boom. And then I told her straight, I said, yo, mom. I said, there's people out here that's manifesting, using demons and dark energies and motherfuckers that's using positive light energies. It don't matter what type of prayer or energy or form of spirituality you're using. The person that's getting up trying to make something happen, it don't matter. They're going to get, they're going to build traction. The person that gets up and want change and wants to change their life and wants to, wants to establish some shit in their life, they could use anything. They could praise a rock. They could look at the rock like it's God. But if they get it up every morning, sacrificing hours, putting time into their imagination, their thoughts, exhausting themselves, sweating, crying, fucking, uh, you know, bleeding for their dreams... It don't matter. They could be dub they, they could be doing witchcraft, all type of devil worshiping. The devil gonna help them motherfuckers get to where they gotta help because they helping themselves. She couldn't you, you know she you know she couldn't say none of that. You know she was like you, you she was like she was like you right. She shit, she hit me with an amen after that. She hit me with an amen. So I'm like, y'all better stop spending all that money trying to do prayers for the boy. The boy gonna do what he wanna do. People are going to do what the fuck they want to do until they spirit feel like it's, a, it's against the wall. Until they spirit realize, realize they've been wasting time in their life. Until they spirit feel like they want to transform and change. So it's like, you know, it's a, it's a bunch. Yeah, yeah, I think every quote unquote successful person y'all see is just using spirituality and astrology. Like some niggas is using all different, putting their faith and belief in all different type of entities. It's all different type of witchcraft, all type of different. And I don't even, when I use the word witchcraft, I'm not even saying that in a negative term neither. Don't get it twisted. Shout out to all my motherfucking witches. So don't get that twisted. You feel me? But for the most part, uh, it don't matter. Like if you, you could be channeling whatever. You could be channeling whatever. I did a reading for a friend of mine about a year ago. I'm pointing out things for them career and they reading, career wise and they reading. That was one of their emphasis, right? Then they started paying attention to another astrologer, which I'm so I'm I'm I encourage people that pay attention to me to don't just lock into me, just learn from everybody. And she started paying attention to somebody else. And now this astrologer is saying specifically this is gonna happen for uh, this placement, Gemini Rising, at this time, hypothetically speaking, and at this age, this is gonna happen here. So then she starts telling me like, okay, yeah, I think, I think, you know, I'm going to do this because at this age, this is going to happen. And I'm like, yo, 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 listen, listen, listen. I just told you what you could do to work shit for yourself. You think you, if she's saying every Gemini rising, quote unquote, hypothetically speaking, every Gemini rising is going to be rich or get money at this age. Do you think every fucking Gemini rising in the world got rich at that age? Do you think every Gemini rising that sat on their ass, they still got rich at that age? Y'all can't be listening to astrologers and spiritualists and just thinking these energies just met, just... Nigga, if we don't do shit, ain't shit gonna happen. It don't matter what energies you brought. It don't matter what placements you have, what aspects you have, what sextiles and trines you have. It don't matter if you're a Taurus moon that rules the physical realm. It don't matter if you're... If, it don't matter what you are. If you're going to sit on your ass and be an idle spirit, you're going to live an idle, floaty-ass life and reincarnate until you get the shit right. Until you understand that you're here to create, experience, and make your purpose. We got multiple purpose. Ain't nobody got no one purpose. Ain't nobody. You ain't come here to do one thing. Last time I checked when I do readings, it's a, it's a couple of lessons motherfuckers got to learn. 
Last time I checked, it's a, it's a couple of lessons I gotta learn in life. It ain't, I don't deal, I don't have one problem. I don't have one thing I'm, I'm personally developing right now. It's a, it's a couple of things. And on top of that, you're here to test your creative abilities. So yeah, you gotta make your purpose in this lifetime. You gotta work shit into existence and read the signs and influences of life where they want you to go. You feel me? A lot of y'all right now are doing things in your life. A lot of y'all right now are doing things in your life and this is where you're at right now wasn't what you thought you was gonna be at when you first started, but you went through transformations. You was learning things on the go and now you're like, damn, three years ago I had this vision. Look where I'm at now. You can't see step five when you're at stage one. You can't see stage five when you're at stage one. You, know, you, you might get a glimpse of stage two and then when you get to stage two, you might get a glimpse of stage three Possibly probably see what stage four could look at look like you ain't gonna know what stage seven and stage eight and stage nine Gonna look at on stage one and two and that's and that's our issue some of the times We don't know how to seize the day take things one day at a time We don't know how to get up in the morning and maximize the day maximize all of our gifts We get a little too lazy as humans in this as spirits in these human bodies. We forget our power All right, so yeah, I, I can't stand astrologers that do that shit I can't stand astrologers that just tell you you're going to get married at this age. That you, you're you going to get rich at this age. No. You got potential. You're going to have potential to do certain things. It depends about your intention. What you're working into reality. Period. I've got readings before, guys. I've got readings before and shit that the astrologer told me. The, I look the past couple of years and I'm like, shit, I could see how that would have been a bigger problem in my life if I didn't put some more attention to it, if I didn't act on it. That was the potential they was giving me. But I didn't hear that and make it concrete. So that's what I got to start understanding with this astrology shit. I just, see, I just seen Hood Healer post some shit today. Hood Healer been on, been on different timing. God damn, she's been on different timing these past couple of weeks. Well, she always on different timing, but... She posted something today and it's something about uh you you a lot of y'all reposted it. Uh stop begging from uh, stop looking for male attention, stop looking for romantic attention. And then somebody gonna leave in the comments, yeah, but I got Venus in this house, so you know I'm like, oh my, oh my goodness. <sighs> so yeah, so your plan is just gonna bully you. So your sun sign and moon sign, you got no control in the, over none of this. Last time I thought these were your tools. Last time I thought you used these things. Last time I thought, I, I'm talking. Right now I'm communicating. I'm using Mercury to y'all right now. I'm communicating my thoughts. Last time I thought I govern what the fuck I say because I'm a man and I control my own fucking actions and I understand the consequences of the things I act and express. Last time I thought I control that. Now, does my Mercury and Scorpio influence my mind and how I communicate sometimes? Yes. It's called the influence for a reason. But ultimately, you push that shit out. You could shut the fuck up if you want to. You don't got to say shit. You could choose to express something wisely. You could choose to express something impulsively. So, yeah, man. Y'all got to chill. Y'all got to chill with this. Astrologers, teachers, spiritualists, readings, tarot readings, telling y'all shit, and then now y'all just concrete with it. Y'all have y'all have lost all power in what you control, cause you was told something in the reading. You're not taking the. I don't like giving nobody definite nothing. I'm giving you all your potential. It's up to you to maximize this shit. I just want to shine the light on your own gifts. I just want to shine the light on your own energies. It's up to you to take this shit to another level, or you can stay complacent. You can be in the same energies that you got that you were in when you got this reading. You cannot be another person a year from now and be like, yo, bro, that reading really did this and a third. Or when I first got a reading from you, I got a reading from other people, and then all y'all readings really helped me push it in together. And I started doing my own research, started learning myself more to transform. That that's that, I don't even want to do readings. It's a waste of my time doing readings for people that that think about astrology in that way. It's a waste of my fucking time. It's a waste of my time. You feel me? So, yeah, guys. And that has a whole lot to do with how some people teach the shit. They'll teach it in a way to psych you up to cop the reading. 
<laughs> so, so, so you thinking you about to walk into some whole spiritual cheat code, which astrology is a spiritual cheat code. But you, but from the mindset of thinking they about to tell you mad definite shit, so you could just sit on your ass and know when certain shit gonna happen for you. Y'all gonna be some sad puppies dealing with astrology in that type of shape or form. Y'all gonna be sad dealing with astrology in that type of form if you don't think you going you don't control shit in this lifetime. There's some motherfuckers out here, uh, 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 ain't get a reading in their life. D don't don't even know they damn sun sign, <laughs> and they making it happen out here. They making it happen. They taking life into their own hands. They controlling their own destiny. This is only to help aid you. This is only to help give you more direction. All right? It's how you want to use this shit. And Hood Healer said to that person in the comment, like, yo, uh, specifically, I, I want to go to the post, but she specifically said some shit. She was like, yo, you got a uh, motherfucking... She said, don't let astrology dictate some shit for you or something like that. I read the comments started dying though. Oh well, I can't find that shit, but y'all get the point. Y'all get the point. Y'all get the point. Oh, we all got debilitations in our chart, certain weaknesses in Achilles heels. We all got them. We all got different issues, problems. It's another reason why I don't fuck with social media like that. Every don't nobody got problems on social media. Nobody got problems. There's nothing for people to work on in, so on social media. Everybody perfect. Everybody perfect. This is why I like posting more fucking triggering shit on my page. I'm trying to filter people that really want to work on this page. This ain't no jolly ass astrology page. This is real shit on this page. This is we growing on this page for real, for real. We want to be better individuals on this page. We want to learn to control our flesh on this page. Get more in tune with what's inside here. The person, the spirit that's driving this goddamn vessel. People want to hear all that sweet shit. People go into astrology and they really just want to hear about themselves. Like, okay, yeah, say the Aries part. Okay, yeah, okay, say the Taurus part. Like, people just want to hear about themselves in astrology. Yeah, astrology could be fun in that aspect, but I'm we past that shit. We past all that shit, man. We're trying to really get to know ourselves, to transform, to take some power in this lifetime. All these mother, all these programs out here trying to get, trying to snatch your power since you came in here. From school to this job to some of your own family members to your environment. Trying to take your power. And you're not looking at this like this is how you take your power back. You're looking at this wrong. You're looking at this shit wrong. Quick side rant. Back to the houses. So uh, Aries rising. Venus transit in the sixth house. You are the epitome of learning to value your damn schedule and what you want to work on. What you value. You got to make that shift to work on what you value right now. The more you continue to stay at a job, a career, or have a schedule that ain't got shit to do with what you love, what you appreciate, what you value, guys, it's going to be a frustrating time for y'all. It's going to be a frustrating time. Now, I ain't saying you got to manifest that business, that side business you value overnight. Now, I ain't saying you, you want to lose weight, you got to lose 30 pounds, 40 pounds overnight. I'm saying you got to take the initiative right now. I'm saying you got to make that shift and place some effort into that right now. I'm saying you got to block out what's going on Leo season on social media and all around you to focus on your schedule and regiment right now. That's what I'm saying to y'all Aries rising and y'all the most determined individuals in the Zodiac. So y'all may have got caught up with certain things career wise. Okay. But y'all right now y'all know, okay, Venus in the sixth house. I'm, I'm, I got to make this shift right now. I'm working on what I love. I'm sorry. I got to find a way to do this. Whether I gotta like sacrifice an hour that would go to me come I get a, I get home at from work around five o'clock and I usually eat and then I usually watch this show and then go to sleep around ten thirty. That out that show might be dead right now. <laughs> Venus and Virgo, that show might be dead right now. That you you need that hour to work on a business. You need that hour to go to the gym. You need that hour to go. You know how much people out here making excuses about about. They couldn't work out during quarantine or they, but listen, I, I be doing all type of home workouts. I got all type of YouTubers work at trainer YouTubers. Like if you really want some shit, see, I'm really in my cat bag right now. If you really want some shit, you're going to find that shit. 
I don't do excuses, y'all. I don't I do accountability. And I've never always been the type to take accountability all the time in my life. And I've had nothing but influences in my life to make me understand I can't be taking things personal. Don't nobody care about your shit. <laughs> the world don't give a fuck about your shit. The world don't give a fuck about your pain, especially being a man. The man, the world don't cater to men's emotions. So for the most part, that's not I'm saying. That's not to say we gotta be all cold and detached. But you gotta find a way to make shit happen. If you want it, you will find it. Somebody had way worse than you, and catapulted themselves. Somebody had way worse than you, and worked a bunch of miracles, transformed themselves. They found it within themselves. We got Cheryl's in the building, man. We got the guru in the building. Shout out to Cheryl's gang, man. Cheryl's the only Cheryl's is the only one if she tells you some shit gonna happen when it's happening. That's the only one I'm believing. Everybody else, I don't I ain't believing it. It's only Cheryl's. <laughs> I'm biased. I don't care. Leave a game. But y'all get the point with that. Y'all get the point with that. Alright, guys? So that's my Aries risings. Now, Pisces risings. Pisces risings. Virgo in that seventh house. Now, y'all already know in y'all seven house with Virgo here, y'all relationships are what? They hard work. You Pisces rises, y'all find yourself overcompensating y'all relationships, having to work on y'all relationships a lot, potentially attracting emotionally unreserved individuals or emotionally reserved, whatever, however you want to call it. But motherfuckers that don't tap into their subconscious and their emotions and make you feel like you overly emotional as a Pisces rising. You feel me? So you deal with them situations where Virgo in the seven house where you become very critical very critical of your relationships. You can find yourself working, overcompensating in your relationships a lot of the times, Pisces rising. Okay? So, y'all go through a lot of ups and downs trying to place effort into your relationship life here. Always building, doing construction work in this house. Okay? And even when certain relationships are feeling good, that mercury be kicking in a little too hard, making you feel like something's about to transform. Making you feel like there's something you're missing that you're not working on in a relationship. Always looking in the mirror and building... Building fake insecurities about shit as Pisces risings, you feel me? So, y'all gotta be careful of that with Virgo in that seventh house, aka, y'all need to make sure when y'all get into relationships, people are reciprocating your energy in relationships, Pisces rising. Now, Venus is in your seventh house, beautiful alignment, very harmonious alignment. So, this is a time you will meet you, may you got potential to meet new people, potential. Potential to meet new individuals, okay? You're gonna have a new aspect of how to be more harmonious with your love, how to be more balanced with your love. AKA, if you're in a relationship right now and that shit has not been balanced for the past couple of months, you ain't letting that shit, you ain't letting that shit happen throughout the whole Venus and Virgo transit. You're gonna find a way to get balanced here. Venus gonna make you realize it hasn't been fair. Venus gonna make you realize it. Venus home in this house. So she feel comfortable communicating, relating, and dealing with all type of understanding when it comes to her love. She's very comfortable seeing how to support and appreciate how she deal with love here. Whether she's being taken advantage of or not. Okay? So overall, y'all gotta make sure with Venus falling into y'all seventh house right now that your appreciation and support placed into a relationship is reciprocated, okay? This is not the time to be over, to be overly comp overly compensating for the relationship and realizing like, hold on, I'm not even giving an opportunity for this person to show me what's up, to show me if this is balanced, okay? Venus, I mean, Venus is gonna show you that in this house. You're gonna pick up on it. You're gonna pick up. You're gonna pick up on it regardless. All type of energies with Venus in the seventh house. Venus in the seventh house, people, you can't play that with them. You can't really manipulate them in relationships like that. It's a cheat code. It's, it's a love cheat code with Venus in the seventh house. If you got the seventh house Lord in the seventh house, or you got Venus in the seventh house, you, you manifest a lot of options date in your dating life. You manifest so much options to the point that you may get picky and fuck up opportunities because it's like you get a little picky here. All right? Because Venus could just bump into love into twin flames just just by being out in the world and connecting and relating just being in the sun house connecting to the external realm that remember i said yesterday or either earlier in the live today or yesterday i said the house you have venus in this is the house you can find love at by default 
Now, in my twin flame love readings, I'm I'm connecting all the air houses. We're looking at Venus aspects in the Venus house, but we're looking at that seventh house Lord. We want to know where that seventh house Lord is. A lot of you that's in relationships, one of your most tightest relationships, the first time you ever been in love, it was through that seventh house Lord a lot of the time. And the more you work with that seventh house Lord, aka, let's say you got this, okay, we, we all be talking about Pisces risings. So they got Virgo in the seventh house, right? That means Mercury rules their seventh house, aka Mercury is the seventh house Lord. Let's say a Pisces rising has Mercury in the ninth house. So what's the, the ninth house would be the area where the twin flames is at. The ninth house would be the area where you're bumping into soulmates, not just in, on an intimate level, but people that fuck with you heavy, like their family, spiritual family. That's the area where you're connecting with people and you're the most compatible with people in that area. So you want to understand every time you deal with the ninth house, aka new experiences, traveling, your form of spirituality, your belief system, uh, adventures, anything correlating to spirituality. It could be spirituality on social media. You leaving a comment on my page, somebody DM you after they see my comment like, yo, what's up? I seen you. Boo -boo. That, that, that could be twin flame potential right there because it came through some type of spiritual, uh, 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 a like-minded spiritual uh, energy. Okay. If you got the seven horse house lord in the ninth house, you can't even date people. You can't even date people that's, that don't got that don't share your form of spirituality type shit. You can't date people that's not into astrology or whatnot. There's, you already know that relationship ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but that would be the area where your relationships resonate the most, all right? Where you're not dealing with a lot of restriction, trying to connect to certain individuals. So guys, we have to, we have to understand house lords, house rulers, these things are very important. All right, guys, I know some of us are still new to astrology. Some of y'all still understanding things about your chart. But, you know, I'm just throwing that in for when you guys are jumping into your studies. When you guys are jumping into your studies, you know, y'all want to really understand house lords, house rulers. You're not really going to find an astrologer that know what they're talking about that don't deal with house lords, house rulers. Any astrologer that know what the fuck they're talking about, they're dealing with house lords and house rulers. They're, talk they're bringing them up. They're using them when they're talking about certain things in your life. Right now, so yeah, Venus moving into the seventh house, it, 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 it loves to be here because it gets to take its love and appreciation and actually connect that, actually relate that, actually deal with it in its partnership, in its relationships. All right, it's here to balance and find harmony in its relationships, it's here to understand where, uh, where certain relationships is unfair and unbalanced. So, Pisces risings, y'all gotta be, oh, y'all gotta be aware of this right now. All right. And, you know, the more that you support the relationships that you you deem valuable, the more you're going to realize, uh, the more universe is going to make sure that shit is reciprocated. But once again, you're going to see which relationships haven't been reciprocating that. And you might just realize it right now. It might have been going on the whole year. And now you're about to realize Venus in this house, Venus in the seventh house going to let you know, like, yo, 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 we can find it. We got... Because this is how it plays out. Venus is in the seventh house, right? Got to find his pleasure. So Venus is going to be in his house like, yo, we got all the potential to meet and connect with all these different individuals and you choosing to stay in this relationship where it's not even that much love here. You don't only want to give it out the love. You don't only want to give it out the support. Oh, no, 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 no. That's that's what your spirit going to feel like. That's the influence you're going to catch in this house if you've been in a, in a, in a lopsided relationship or a lopsided situation. You know, it's 2021. You know, we, we don't even do relationships no more. We just do situationships. That's what we do. It's it's situationship and get married, a situationship, and that's it. That's it. We don't even like, we don't even like officially date anymore in 2021. Shit crazy. Shit crazy. So that's what we're dealing with with Pisces Risings, all right? Um... And because Venus is in the seventh house and Pisces rises, a lot of times y'all feel unappreciated. A lot of times y'all may feel uh, a lack of support and love because you got Virgo in the seventh house. With Venus in the seventh house, when the support and love come, you got to be able to see it. You got to be able to know it. In the first live I was doing earlier today, I was talking about how a lot of our love languages is different. Okay, so if you're dealing with somebody, you want to know where their Venus is at, a.k.a. not just the sign. You really want to know the house. You, you want to know the house. Now, they're, now, they're both important. They're both important. But the house to me is more important. Because that's the area of life where they seek pleasures, where they deal with they love. So if you taking their Venus out of that house, they're going to start looking at you like you's an uncomfortable motherfucker to be around. 
<laughs> Ain't nothing pleasurable about being around you. You always taking my Venus out the house that I like it to be in. I got Venus in the ape house. All right. So what I value and appreciate is spirituality, is the occult. All right. Is mysticism, a.k.a. being able to be in silence around a goddamn woman. And she just look at me and know my temperament and know I just want to chill tonight. And I don't got to express that shit. All right. I value all type of occult shit. Venus in the eighth house gonna have a spiritual inclination. So it's like if I have to moderate that all the time with my relationships, if I gotta change that up all the time with my love, you feel me? And my love comes intense in the eighth house. Is Mars and Pluto here? So it comes intense. Could be sexually charged up. Could be real passionate. If that shit can't get matched, it's gonna it's gonna make me not really feel like I'm getting the love that I want or the or or the uh, support and appreciation I want in this relationship. So that's very important to look at when y'all dealing with y'all partner. Not just the Venus sign and the alignment they Venus is making with your Venus or with your other planets. You want to see the house your partner has they Venus in. That's going to help you to understand like, okay, they truly value this. They truly love this. If I play out, if I find natural ways to put, to place, you know, effort in helping support this, they're going to look at me as something valuable. They're going to look at me as something that they, they're going to start to appreciate me some more. Now, depending on our energies, it may be hard for us to do that. Certain, uh, it may be it may be hard for us to do that. Depending on your sun, moon, Venus, Mars, you might have certain squares opposition, and it's like, damn, I can't really get down with value in that. I can't really get down with supporting that because I actually naturally support this, value this. But this is why this is why this is why when I talk about synergy, guys, that should come down to the effort. That should comes down to how much you fuck with a motherfucker. Two individuals that really love each other and spiritually bonded, it don't matter what they sun, moon, risings. It don't now that shit does not matter. This is why I don't do synastry readings. That shit does not matter. Shit does not matter. So that's what we're dealing with Pisces risings. Now, um, now. Uh, Aquarius Risings. I'm just trying to change the tune. Aquarius Risings. Uh, Venus transiting the ape house. Speaking about the ape house. Venus transiting the ape house. Okay? So, yo, this is me. In fact, this is my placement. So, Venus... Venus don't even like Venus don't like the eighth house. It just went from home in the seventh house. It's like right back to being in a fucking debilitation. It's like, oh shit. Eighth house is sticky. It's dark and nasty. It's demons. It's transformations going on. It's secrets. Motherfuckers is lying. It's dark. It's hidden. Venus want to deal with love and pleasures and connection. So when it gets into this ho this house, that shit is hard to do. It can't even see who it be connecting to at sometimes. It's such an intense place. So, AKA when it's time to bring connect the love and bring it up, it be so much work. It, it feels so vulnerable doing it. It rather di it starts correlating to wanting to have more of a private relationship. It's hard to put the relationship in the light or express to others that is dealing with this individual, because even that feels vulnerable. All right. So with Venus transiting your eighth house, you see you got Virgo in the eighth house. Aquarius risings. So with Virgo in your eighth house, this is actually Virgo is actually it's a nice place to have Virgo. Why? Because Virgo deals with critical analysis. So this individual is always critiquing what's going on behind the scenes. This person is always trying to uh, break down mentally what they could do to transform themselves. This person is always criticizing how they deal with their own emotional transformations and how it impacted them. So this will be an Aquarius risings are the type of individuals to have something impact them. That uh that starts causing depression or putting them in, in in low emotion, dark emotion, and they'll be the ones to try to, to to analyze the situation to get to the root of it, to get them out of that emotional rut. All right, and y'all already know Aquarius don't deal with emotion. So their mind will help them navigate that shit. Now it could take a toll on y'all at times, Aquarius, Sun, Moon, and Risings, because it deals with too much suppression. When you got a lot of Saturn energy, you will suppress a lot of emotion at times. Okay? Especially if you got your moon. Which deals with the emotion being being uh, your moon in the 10th house, 11th house, in Capricorn, okay, in Aquarius, and, and, and debilitated. Well, it ain't really, the, the moon ain't really debilitated in Aquarius, but y'all just gotta understand 
because it's ruled by Saturn, it's going to add that influence to how you deal with the emotions. Make you a little colder, a little more, more detached with the emotions. You, you're, you're going to want more space in your relationships a lot of the time. So, with... Be, uh, that's why so that's why it's nice to have Virgo in that eighth house. Remember, it's a sextile. It's sixty degrees. Its natural house is the sixth house, so it loves it. It could it could rock with the eighth house because all it's thinking is like, okay, when it comes to sex, I'm real critical of how I deal with sex. I'm real critical of all forms of transformation I go through in this lifetime. When I'm dealing with uh, when I'm dealing with energies I can't really see, you know, my critical analysis helps me to try to gain awareness of what's behind it. These individuals, Aquarius risings. This is why Aquarius Risings will not get so hyped about certain shit that's surface level because they already reading the subconscious by default. So it get deep there. So with Merc with Venus translating the ape house, because the ape house deals with your secrets, the ape house deals with heavy emotion, transformations, this is what you're about to start being able to appreciate. You about to appreciate the transformations you've been you done been going through this year. Things that impacted your emotions, you about to appreciate some of them scenarios. Things that were just dark and transformative and hurt you and was painful, you about to appreciate that you went through, you, you about to appreciate going through that shit earlier this year or in your past. Or things, emotions you suppressed, Aquarius Risings, you feel me? Things that hit you here, but you was being all Saturn-like and you were saying, man, man, fuck that shit. That shit was painful, fuck that shit. I'm just gonna get more money. Or I'm going to just be detached from these individuals. I'm going to go here. Venus is like, now, we got to connect to that right now. We got to get more understanding of that right now. We actually got to love how we... We actually got to find some positivity in using that shit to transmute some energy right now. All right? That's Venus in, transiting the eighth house all day, every day. Now, it, deal, it deals with vulnerability. So, if y'all are dealing with certain relationships... Or when it comes to connecting inner thoughts and emotions, this is, is gonna not gonna be the easiest time to do this right now with Venus trans in your eighth house, because your feelings are about to be real heavy right now. Your feelings gonna be kind of intense, so you guys have to pace yourselves and try to be the try to be in the present as not in the present, but like yeah, y'all wanna pace yourself and be in the present and try to be as you know one two three ish with a, with expressing the feelings, so you don't come off too intense, too impulsive. All right. Or you don't just let a lot out at one time. <laughs> Take it from a Venus and Ape house over here. Okay? So, uh, that's what y'all want to deal with. But I want to give y'all that positive aspect right there. On how to appreciate and love transmutation. How to appreciate and love, you know, working on your emotions. Getting to the root of why you feel certain ways. Getting to the root of why something's even under the bed. Why is something even a secret anymore? Why you have to move in the dark with certain things right, right now? Venus is going to be like, do we really have to keep this hidden right now? Can't, can we bring this up to the surface a little bit right now? Okay? Because Virgo's in this house working on forms of transformation and the emotions. Virgo's already working on that in this house. It's already working on that in this house. So when Venus come in there, you appreciate working on that shit. You appreciate all that shit. You're more conscious of how you have sex right now. You're more conscious of how you sexually connect and open up to others right now. You're more conscious of, of all type of things that may be hidden and subconscious or you keep away from your partner or keep away from certain individuals. You start to become more lighthearted with Venus here and feeling like, okay, I know it's heavy emotion, but I could connect this. I could relate this. So Venus is trying to support you in that way. But I would be lying if, it's, if I was saying it's not gonna, you're not going to deal with some vulnerability in some type of shape or form here. Because you might be forced to look at some things, connect to some things that you've been suppressing for a while. God knows how long you... Shit in the ape house stay in there for years sometimes. <laughs> a motherfucker could keep a secret, a secret for a long time. i seen some posts. i seen some posts. Some of y'all may have seen that. i seen some posts on the Explore the other day saying some shit like... Studies say a person can only keep a secret for two years or something like that for two years until they can't let it go. So I said, oh, or studies say a person can only uh, uh, act or pretend to be something that they're not for like two years. I said, what's what studies? What's y'all never met a Scorpio? Y'all never met Scorpio Sun Moon Rising? A Scorpio, a Scorpio Moon? Let me say, not the Scorpio Sun. They they can't hide secrets as good as the Moon. Y'all never met a Scorpio moon? 
Y'all never met a moon in the ape house? <laughs> what? Y'all never met a Gemini? What? <laughs> Two years? That, that's, that's easy time for a Scorpio moon. That's easy time. Two years, that ain't shit. <laughs> keeping a secret away from what? Keeping a secret for two years? What? My best friends don't even know my middle. My, my best friends don't even know my last name. I'm 31. I'm, I'm 35. I'm 40. I've been where I knew them since elementary school. They don't even know my last name. <laughs> Tripping. Tripping. That's way too short. So, <laughs> y'all never met a Mars in Scorpio? Like, y'all never, y'all bugging out? Y'all never met an eighth house stellium person? Y'all never met a person with a bunch of air in their damn chart? Double lives, living head ass? Motherfucker got a lot of air in their chart. They might be living four different lives. <laughs> Especially them double air signs. I'm an air, air sign. I'm a, sun, I'm a sun in air with an air in stellium. And I'll psych your ass the fuck up. Motherfucking double air signs. Oh yeah, forget about it. Don't let don't let Gemini be in the moon too. Don't let them be like a Libra Sun Gemini moon. Oh my god. Y'all don't be knowing shit. Y'all don't be knowing what the fuck they be doing when y'all You think they you you really think they just that person when they're around you. <laughs> They'll have you feeling that they will have you feeling like they really is just that person when they just around you. They have to be like, yeah, 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 ain't doing nothing. No, they just go to work when they not around me. Like, all right, double air signs, double lives. So it's more placements than that. It's all type of placements than that. There's some other sneaky placements out there. All right. I ain't saying double air signs is just doing that automatically. I'm just saying they have the power. They have the capabilities because they highly intellectual. And they understand relationships on many levels. So they know how to read you to see how you think. To see what you even be thinking about. To know what to disclose and what to show you. For you to think that's that and what's not what. <laughs> let me stop, let me, let me stop uh, uh, putting out, exposing y'all shit. Air, double air signs. Alright. But that's what we got going on there guys. That's what we got going on son. So y'all Venus Aquarius rises right now. Y'all got to embrace transformation. Right now, y'all already doing some shadow work. Y'all already working on yourselves. You feel me? You already trying to build sexual discipline. Oh, you're going to love Venus in the eighth house right now. You're going to love that. You're going to manifest a conversation with me right now talking about like, yeah, that's great. I'm practicing, you know, sexual discipline too. I'm practicing holding out on this too. I'm practicing discipline. you going to, you bumping into individuals having conversations like that. You're you going to get support there. You're going to get love and appreciation for the shit you trying to put effort and transform it. You're going to manifest conversations with individuals, you know, encouraging you to do your shadow work, encouraging you. You feel me? To deal with your transformation. Encouraging you, letting you know, like, yeah, I know you got your heart broke and that shit been fucking your head up for the past year, but look, look, look at all the progress you made. Venus is here to remind you of that shit, Aquarius Risings, okay? Reminds you how far you came in that eighth house. Next, Sag Risings. All right, my Sag Risings, Venus transiting the ninth house, okay? Excuse me, not Sag Risings. Um, Capricorn Risings, all right? Capricorn Risings. Virgo in the ninth house. So what we know, the ninth house deals with the house of enlightenment, the house of education, all right? Deals with experiences, deals with uh, long distance travel, philosophy, religion, all forms of spirituality, all right? Spiritually inclined house. So we know whatever's in the ninth house is something that we're experiencing a lot. Virgo is a little shaky in this house. Virgo is a square in this house. It don't really bang with this house because Virgo deal with routine, scheduling, and organizing. The ninth house dealing with, with the ninth house don't got no limits. The ninth house deal with higher learning. It don't got no caps here. So this is why Sagittarius and Virgos they be they be having their clash. Now they learn a whole lot from each other. They learn a whole lot from each other. Sagittarius teach Virgos to drop their shoulders a little bit and live life a little bit. <laughs> Take some leaps of faith a little bit. Be a little bit more spontaneous. Virgos teach Sagittarius to be more organized, to move with more tact, to be more to to apply the wisdom they have more realistically for something that can help build them something. 
So they learn a whole lot from each other, but they could they could piss each other the fuck off. All right. So when you got Virgo in the ninth house, I told ya, Earth risings, we good. We are very good for suppressing our creativity and our forms of expression. So Virgo in the ninth house, I have you being real critical of what of new things that shit that you should just be looking at as a thrill. Like damn, let me just jump into that new experience. That look like an adventure. Virgo will have you being real critical of that shit. Your friends hit you up spontaneously like, yo, dope ass pool party is a, is a private invite, but my homegirl told me I could bring my homies or whatever. Yo, pull up, boom, boom, boom. you like, damn, uh, damn, you just start Virgo in that ninth house when it comes to new experiences and shit, new adventures. you like, like, just just go, just try, just live life, live life a little bit, uh, Cat Rising, just go ahead with all that extra plan and shit. Damn, drop your shoulders a little bit. You feel me? So yeah, the Virgo, uh, the Virgo in that ninth house, it is gonna learn though. It is gonna learn how to build some damn structure. Virgo in the ninth house, it is gonna learn the significance of schedule and routine and regimen, and that's what that ninth house stay teaching you, aka Cat Rises. Every time y'all have these big ass goals for things y'all want to build in y'all first house and things y'all want to structure and businesses y'all want to stabilize, y'all got all these big ass goals with Virgo in the ninth house. I mean, with, with Capricorn in the, night, in the first house, and then you be running into that, all these experiences that's teaching you, we ain't getting nowhere without no regimen. We ain't getting nowhere without no schedule. You may have even manifested an a, a, a older sibling, a, or your parents, or a grandparent, uncle, aunt, or a mentor, or a teacher, or a friend that be telling you that. Like, yo, you could do so much, but like, yo, you got to get organized. Trying to teach you that with Virgo in the ninth house. Okay? So with Venus transiting in the ninth house, what does Venus do? It brings love and appreciation. So when it comes to you wanting to experience new things, you know, right now you're going to feel like you need to shed some skin right now. And you need to go ahead and experience some new things. You need to create a new to-do list. You right now, be, Venus in the ninth house is vision board energy. Like, y'all going to want to make vision boards and shit. Because y'all probably going to realize, like, damn. What the fuck I be doing? Like I just be on I just be on reality all day. Venus in the ninth house in Virgo is gonna want to learn how they could build upon being able to experience new things here. Okay? Venus is gonna find the love to learn. Ninth house deal with learning and teaching. So when Venus comes here, it's gonna teach you how to appreciate being able to learn how you can build stability. To be able to experience the physical realm some more, travel some more, do more things here. But ultimately, when it comes to your spiritual path, your experiences, and things you're trying to check off your bucket list, Venus is very hyped to connect to these things. Okay? It's very hype. But once again, the house that you have Virgo in is going to be a house that you need to learn how to routine and schedule. So Virgo in this house not only uh, 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 is critical of how it experiences things. It's teaching you to regiment your education. It's teaching you to be more on schedule with your spiritual practices in this house, Capricorn Risings, with Virgo in the ninth house. You got to work education into your regiment. You got to find ways to work on, on, on learning new things. You feel me? So Venus in this ninth house is influencing all of that. All of that. Maybe real dialed into learning certain things or educating yourself about what is it you got a certain project you're working on. You're probably gonna try to soak up as much research as you can right now on how to learn about stabilizing a certain thing right now with Virgo in that ninth house. By default, this is why Capricorn risings or Earth risings in general, but a lot of Capricorn risings be motivational speakers and shit. Y'all can see the way I talk. A lot of the times y'all could go on my live You like damn Bora The shit said Venus and Virgo through the houses You just been motivational speaking the last 25 minutes This is cap moon cap rising shit <laughs> We go through so much experiences You got that And you got all that experience with In the ninth house with Virgo here Learning how to build Stabilize To the point we get real uh, rooted in Teaching others how to learn How to build up your shit You know And it comes with that type of Get it through the mud type energy You feel me so that's what we got going on there. So that's what my cat rising, do you feel me? You got to learn to appreciate that. You got to learn to appreciate, appreciate educating yourself when it comes to how you're trying to build stability, all right, and how you deal with regiments. You got to be open to, you got to be able to reflect on certain times you was being taught about how serious regiment and schedule is to understand the significance of it. Don't nothing get nowhere cat rising without that. 
All right. Now, 10th house, Sag Risings. All right. We got that Virgo in the 10th house. Now, we know the 10th house is an important house because that house deals with our life path as a rising sign. So, Sagittarius rising signs. <laughs> Sagittarius rising signs. Y'all know y'all first. Y'all know y'all first house is full of experiences. Y'all know y'all are uh, charismatic as hell. Y'all jumping into all different. Y'all y'all actually are the ones that entertain thrills and experiencing new things with Sagittarius in the first house. Y'all don't really uh, shy away from certain um uh you know new experiences, new new adventures. Y'all love diving into that shit. Y'all love when people. Y'all love when people call y'all talking about yo this this. This, 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 that, and the third going on right now. This, that, and the third going on right now. This, this, this party, you feel me? Y'all love getting them type of calls. Like, oh, I bet. That's y'all, that's y'all whole life, personally. People just dragging y'all in and out of situations in the first house. Yo, like, yo, yo, this tomorrow we out here. You like, you getting all excited and thrilled. Yo, fire blazing some. Sagittarius Rising, love that shit. Love some spontaneous shit. Love some adventure. But then when we get to the 10th house, y'all got Virgo there. So Virgo be uh Virgo, the tenth house is about your social status, career, foundation. All right, how you broadcast yourself to the world, how you stay, how you can use your reputation or your social status or your popularity or how people know you to build some foundation stability in your life. So when you got uh, Sagittarius rising, got Virgo there. So Virgo, <laughs> Virgo be having y'all realize like, damn, I'm creative as a motherfucker as a Sagittarius rising. I got all this damn fire, aka awareness, insight, creativity in my personal life. All this damn charisma in my personality. All this damn knowledge and wisdom in my first house. But damn, I need to learn to build a schedule and routine or my 10th house ain't never going to pop. <laughs> I ain't never going to be able to build the business and form a stability I want in the 10th house if I just be all random and spontaneous all the time. Let alone if you got your sun and moon in fire or air, you really, you really could be, you could, I, I know Sagittarius rises, that's double earth. I know Sagittarius rises, that's double earth. And they still float in that house. They still don't develop that routine and schedule in that house. So Sagittarius rises, y'all got to learn that shit with Virgo in that 10th house. You're being influenced to be critical of how you can use your first house energies, aka your knowledge, your personal knowledge, wisdom, what you have insight on, what you already got knowledge about, what you creative about, what you have awareness about, and how can you stabilize that in the 10th house? How can you start building upon that in the 10th house? A lot of your social status is with Virgo here. A lot of your social status, people are already going to feel like they can learn from you as a Sagittarius rising. How do you use that? form of uh, social status or reputation to start building stability here. So this is why I told y'all Sagittarius and, Sagittarius and Virgo got a lot to learn about each other. You feel me? We was just talking about this chechi facts. You feel me? So with Venus coming into the 10th house, what does it do? It brings appreciation. I have Virgo into the 10th house. Honestly, I'm realizing finally the importance of sticking to the schedule. Yup. You seen how much it uh, helps that 10th house. You seen how much it it uh, supports that house. So when you got Bert Venus coming into that 10th house, it's time to learn how to love building that schedule that you want to uh, create for your career. When it come, Once again, Venus coming into the, into the earth houses, these next, this next month and a half is going to be more of a career influence for you guys. You guys have to learn working on, you have to learn to love how to work on things. You have to love. You have to love going to bed tired as fuck during this next month and a half. If you got Venus and in, in, in transiting your Earth house, Virgo and in in, all my uh, all my fire rising signs, all my fire rising signs. Okay, y'all have to love feeling exhausted and tired going to bed and actually getting proper rest because you worked your ass off today. In, in something that you wanted to work on though. In something you loved. In something you appreciated. You feel me? Trust me. I did, Listen, I deal with the same shit, guys. I'm a, <laughs> I'm a whole cap moon, cap rising. So, like, I deal with this is one. What I'm talking about right now is one of my life lessons. I got sat in the first house. I need to learn how to invest time into what I'm personally building. 
I need to learn to deal with personal time management and all that shit. So that's my life. So I feels y'all. I feels you on that one. But when you got that Venus coming in the tenth house, you you it's your social status. So Venus gonna bring some love to your social status and career. So this might be a time, guys. You know, Venus in the Venus in Earth houses could bring a lot of career opportunities, but especially the tenth house. Maybe some promote, maybe promotion time. Maybe working in a job right now, and your friend might tell you, "Yo, the same job you're doing right now, they paying more over here." You like word? Maybe I got to be open to that. Uh, uh, Venus gonna bring some type of appreciation, but you gotta learn to love this house some more. You gotta learn to love how you setting regiment, uh, setting a regiment in this house. You gotta learn to love the work, the brainstorm. Like y'all gotta learn loving the brainstorming aspect of things. Let alone working on it. People don't even appreciate sitting down and saying, okay, I know I want to do this. How do I develop a plan? I love that part. I love that part. I love that part. I love developing a curriculum for my Patreon or my YouTube or what I'm going to talk about on live. I love devising that. You a creator. What you going to create? You feel me? So Venus in the 10th house... That's the energy I got to get into. The 10th house deal with like construction work. Because we always building shit and trying to see how to make things work in this house. How to stabilize shit in this house. So Venus in, moving into this house, y'all got to appreciate doing construction work in this house. Alright? And y'all going to see things blossom. I'm telling y'all. This Venus, if y'all willing to appreciate support, get more aligned and connect to this house, build more schedule in this house, y'all going to y'all going to y'all going to feel different. Y'all going to feel different by the time Venus makes his way out of here cuz you're going to feel like you extracted all the support possible and attracted more. You know, social status is going to feel invigorated after this. Social status is going to have a new you going to have a new pep to your step. You're going to be manifesting situations you know, with Venus transiting in this 10th house with people telling you like, uh, yo, yo, you looking good. Because 10th house did with your social status. Like, you, you looking focused. I need to get like you. Yeah, yeah, I got that Venus in my 10th house. I'm learning to appreciate how I work on this goddamn Virgo in this 10th house of Sagittarius rising. I'm not just, I, I'm enjoying summertime. We about to be in Leo energy too. So Sagittarius, Sagittarius rising, y'all about to be turned up. Yeah, we about to be in a fire season. So y'all about to be personally turned up some already. All right. So y'all got to make sure. Y'all got to make sure we emphasize this 10th house work. All right, guys. So boom. Now my uh, Scorpio risings. Scorpio risings. Virgo in the 11th house. So the 10th house deals with like social status, the organization of the business. I like to say 11th house deal with the networking, the connecting of the business, the relations of the related to the business. How you express your business, how you get your business out in the outside world, how you communicate it, how you get it to touch others, people you don't know, how you use social media, how you use different forms of communication, how you work your relationships, how you see the resource and substance to your relationships, how you make your individuality established in the outside world. That's the 11th house. So with Virgo here, you could be a little, uh, what's this? This is my uh, Scorpio Rises. Goddamn Scorpio rises, y'all could be real nervous. You know, all these houses we got Virgo, and we could be real shaky and nervous with it. We could be real shaky and nervous with these houses. You feel me? So with Nerp, which with Virgo in the uh, Virgo in the goddamn eleven house, you could be most creative. Scorpio rises be some creative individuals. I I know a lot of Scorpio rises. I attract a lot of them. So y'all be some of the most creative individuals. And then when y'all, once y'all let y'all creativity, once y'all use any 10th house, 11th house energy, y'all brand y'all business or y'all use social media to brand something or connect it, motherfuckers be like, niggas be shocked. Niggas be shocked. Like, oh shit, you into fashion? You into astrology? How long you been, you been learning this shit? I just see you just started teaching this shit. You be like, I've been into this shit all my life. Like, like word? Nigga, we went to... Nigga, we went to middle school with each other. Why you ain't say that shit back then? <laughs> Only heard you say like five words in three years from sixth to eighth grade. So yeah, Scorpio rises, man. Y'all know how to protect y'all personal space. 
That's that. That's one thing that child, we don't got to teach y'all. Y'all know how to protect your personal space. Y'all know how to guard that shit. Y'all know how to just make sure anybody don't just walk into y'all personal life. And when y'all and when y'all realize y'all slipped up, y'all know how to pick up on that quick. But when we get into that Virgo and Eleven House, guys, y'all gotta work that house. You cannot be overly critical of how you take your creativity. Your family, your family. Some of the most successful people in the world just said, fuck it. Do y'all realize that? 610 Aquarius in the building. Y'all sh shout out to the big homie. Shout out to the king. Y'all tap in with my boy. Do y'all realize that? Do you realize some of the most successful people didn't even have a fucking plan? They just said, fuck it. I'm about to just go in. And then shit popped off for them. Fuck it, I'm about to just make these videos. I don't know what the fuck this YouTube shit is about. I don't know nothing about YouTube, whatever. But I'm going to just press play and just talk that shit or do whatever. I'm going to just do the Instagram thing. I'm, I mean, I'm going to just make this business. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I'm going to just go in. A lot of people are successful, quote unquote successful, or built some shit up just because of that. Just because of that. Certain signs can't do that. I ain't going to say can't, so excuse me, excuse me. Certain signs are very reluctant and hesitant to do that. Certain signs are whipped the shits. Aries, Geminis, Leos, Sagittariuses. Yeah, <laughs> they don't care. They don't care. They just jump right into it. They don't give a damn. They don't be think. They just trust their visions. This is why. I t well, I, I named every fire sign. I named every fire sign for the most part. I didn't throw Libra in there because Libras Libras hesitate too. Libras be in their mind too, especially the goddamn moons. Y'all moon, y'all Libra moons be getting me mad. Cause y'all mad creative. Libra moons be getting me tight. Libra moons and Virgo moons be getting me hot. Virgo moons be getting me really mad. I be want to slap a lot of y'all Virgo moons. I'm going to keep it a rack with y'all. I be want to slap a lot of Virgos. <laughs> Just Virgos, period. Virgos, sun, moon, rising. And I love Virgos. I love Virgos. That's the thing. I, I motherfucking love Virgos. You feel me? But I be wanting to slap a lot of y'all. Just, just a, a love slap, though. A love slap. Slap love into y'all. Just slap y'all back into sense. All right. Not an abusive slap. It's gonna look. It's gonna feel and look like one. But I be really wanting to give y'all the power of the hand. What the five fingers say to the face? Like one of them slaps. Because y'all be working my nerves, man. Oh my God! Having the most creative ideas, the most creative plans, motherfucker. Me, me. I be having. The idea of how to do some shit. But I, sometimes it's like, damn, I wish somebody helped me learn how to organize this shit. I don't know nothing about LLCs, copywriting. I don't know shit about. I don't even know how to manage my schedule to fit this in. So that's where Virgo's coming all day. Like, yo, bro, this is mad easy. Motherfucking robots. Y'all just y'all niggas is just MacBooks. <laughs> so that's why y'all be getting me mad. Y'all seen what I just tweet? I just gave messages for all moon signs. But right before I came on this, I tweeted. I just made a tweet for all moon signs. A uh, post, uh, uh, advice for all moon signs. I don't know if any of all y'all seen it before getting on the live. But my message to the Virgos was, be careful of that word security. Because y'all love that word. And that should be y'all detriment of a lot of the time. That word, that energy, that frequency, vibration, security... That shit works against Virgo, Sun, Moon, Risings a lot of the time, especially the moons. And I be wanting to snap y'all out that shit. I be wanting y'all to realize like, yo, you don't know what's going to happen when you start that business. You can't always know what's... You got to be able to take leaps of faith in life. You have to... And this is just general. Now I'm talking to everybody. You have to be able to take leaps of faith and say, yo, universe, I'm just... I don't give a fuck. I'm just going to do this shit. I'm not, yo, universe, you know I got my short-term and long-term goals, but I know I can't control everything. I can't control everything. I'm only controlling what I can. 
So whatever happens, happens. Whatever results I get is what the results I get, and we go and we go we gonna alter it from there. We gonna learn from there. Virgos, y'all gotta get used to doing that shit, especially Virgo moons. Y'all gotta get used to doing that shit. Y'all gotta watch Pisces some more. I'm tired of seeing Virgo moons, y'all Virgo heavy Virgo energies, Virgo stelliums. Have y'all be talking to me about the most creative shit in the world? Y'all be having me about to steal y'all goddamn ideas. Y'all, I'm the wrong person to be telling ideas. I'm a Capricorn moon, Capricorn rising, Scorpio stellium. I'm the wrong nigga to tell ideas. And then three, six months later, I don't see you work on that shit. Like, all right, I gave you time. I ain't want to steal it right away. <laughs> I gave you time, though. I gave you time. That, that's it. You told me about that creative shit in January. We going into August, and now you're talking to me about some new shit? Oh, I right, bet. You must have don't care about that shit, so don't get mad at me when I copyright that shit. <laughs> don't get mad at me when you see me. When you, you call me like, yo, bro. Like, yo, what's good, bro? Yo, <laughs> remember that clothing brand I told you about that idea? Why I just was on Instagram, I seen an ad with a nigga with, uh, I seen some ad, and it's some Instagram page, they already got 10K, and it's the same shirts, the same t-shirt designs I was telling you about, like, word, bro, <laughs> you send me that shit. Now, now, look in the bio, they probably got the CEO, the, the owner of it probably got his name tagged in the bio, nah, bro, it's no it's nobody, it's no nothing in the bio, nothing. They not. They don't got the state where they making this shit. Like, dead ass. Damn, bro, it's a small world. You you ain't tell nobody else that shit? Nah, bro, I just told you. Dead ass? Damn, bro. Yo, bro, that's why you gotta... Bro, this is why you create... Yo, bro, you creative as hell. You gotta make sure you, you be having mad creative ideas, bro. Stop sleeping on your ideas. That's fuck that idea. It's all good. That shit done though. They, that shit done. Just whatever you just told me right now, the other month, like work on that. You good? Motherfucker, I'm just, just cashing out. Cats. So don't, don't do not trust no goddamn cat moon Scorpio Mars and Scorpio with no damn uh. Stop playing. If you ain't gonna work that shit and that shit look like it sound good to me. See, that's the difference about the earth signs. The Capricorns, truth be told, Capricorns don't want to do the work. Truth be told. Truth be told, Capricorn energy don't want to do the work. Earth signs deal with working, but Virgo's really the one working the most out of all the earth signs. Virgo's the one working the most. I'd say, it, 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 at times it switches from Taurus to, at times it switches from Taurus to Virgo's. Taurus put in some damn work when it when when it comes to when it comes to what they really devoted about, you see a crazy work effort from a Taurus. But Capricorns, truth be told, we not really trying to work. We trying to use. It's Saturn. We trying to use. So so don't give don't give us no good business ideas. Make sure that shit LLC before that shit. You tell me that shit. So I go on the computer like, ah, right, damn, this motherfucker copyright that shit already? Ah, shit, I thought I was about to run off on the plug. That nigga smart. LLC that shit before telling me. Nigga know my stilo. You feel me? Straight up. It's Saturn. Capricorn wants to use some shit. So, y'all got to be careful telling Capricorns and shit, y'all ideas and shit, y'all business ideas. Capricorn. When, when, when y'all tell a Capricorn some shit and they hit you like, word, tell me more, bro. When they hit you with that, it's going to be two responses from a Capricorn. You tell Capricorn about, about a business idea, some shit you want to work on. If they don't really fuck with it, you're going to see the Saturn energy pop out. You're going to see them be non-responding. Like, you're going to see that debilitation of the moon. They ain't really going to be responding. They're going to be like, word. They're not going to believe in your idea like that. Because they, a Capricorn going to feel like this motherfucker not even structured with they shit. You can't bring a, you can't bring 
a, 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 a idea, a business idea to a Capricorn, and you don't, you're not really structured with it. You don't have a real plan. They don't look at you like you're not really serious about a real business making money. Now you tell the Capricorn some shit that, and and, it, and to the Capricorn, uh, and to the Capricorn, it sounds like some shit that could make money. They gonna hit you with the tell me more. What, okay, okay. Oh, when you develop this idea, how long you been thinking about this? Okay, so you know people that can set this up. Who? Oh, it's a website that can set this up. What's the website? <laughs> What's the website? How much? How much it cost this? Okay, so it just cost three hundred dollars to get that shit set up. Okay, all right. And how long you been thinking about this? Just a couple of days. Okay. And the Capricorn mind is like, okay, I'm gonna get this motherfucker a couple of weeks to bring this shit back up. This month for a couple of weeks. If I don't see, if I don't, if I don't hear this motherfucker say they work in this shit, I'm gonna change the name on this motherfucker. Back to the name brand. Back to the name brand shit. They could be like, yo, bro, this is that same brand. Like, I ain't gonna lie, bro. This is the same shit I was just telling you about, but they got a different name. They're like, damn, that's Capricorn be sitting like it's Capricorn sitting there. Like, damn, what a coincidence. That is that is the same. That's that's the same pattern hoodie and everything, but the name different, bro. That shit di is a little different. Nigga start psyching out his homie like, yeah, you right. This shit is a little different, but but they 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 spirit still tingling a little bit. Like that shit, I don't know, bro. I could have swore that that shit sound like that shit look just like my shit. You like yo, bro? It's a small world, bro. It's a small world, my nigga. Like you never know, bro. <laughs> so y'all gotta be careful. Don't tell me that shit. Now, I already got a lot of shit in the works right now, so I don't need to steal y'all ideas. <laughs> I'm, I'm raising out of toxic energy, so y'all can trust me. All right? Y'all can trust me, all right? <laughs> but nah, dead ass, though. <laughs> that, that's, that's what them niggas be on. Capricorns just be trying to use some shit. Capricorns just be trying to use some shit, man. Capricorns that have you working for them. Some of y'all date Capricorns and y'all working for them right now. <laughs> y'all working for them right now. Y'all don't even know. Y'all don't even know y'all working for them right now. You just think you helping out with some shit. No, you 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 an employee that's not on payroll right now. You got two jobs right now. You clock in here. For, you clock in this place from 9 to 5. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, you doing this for that cat. And it's so funny. I'm just thinking about my past relationships. I know all my, I know all my ex girlfriends could be like, yeah, they ain't that motherfucker. It's hard work. Always some shit you gotta fix. Always some shit you gotta help him work on. It's always, it's always something with that motherfucker. It's always a new responsibility that he got that I gotta get dragged into. Yeah, yeah. Fuck it. You my girlfriend. You goddamn right. What is you here for? You wasting time if you ain't helping me work on some shit. Fuck wrong with you. So that's that cap energy, man. Now, so the motherfucking Virgo in the 11th house, Scorpio Risings, I ain't playing with y'all this beat. I ain't playing with y'all with Venus transiting y'all 11th house. Y'all have to learn about and appreciate connecting y'all shit into the collective. That Y'all be just trying to stay in y'all personal shell. Sometimes it take a lot for y'all to break out that shell, that personal shell, that personal cave in that first house with Scorpio in there. Y'all gotta learn to ooze up out there and connect your shit into the collective. Connect your shit into the 11th house. Y'all gotta learn to get more active on social media for your brand and your business. Y'all gotta learn communicating your business to others. Letting people know what you got. Y'all need business cards. Y'all need another IG for y'all shit. Okay, you don't wanna post this shit on your personal IG? Make another IG for it. But I don't want excuses. I don't want that nervousness and that critical, that heavy critical analysis in that 11th house. You highly critical of who you work with. You highly critical of, of how you connect things. Take that leap of faith in that 11th house. Take that leap of faith, okay? And take your all that got. Scorpio, once again, the Scorpio constellation is one of the most underrated creative signs in uh, creative constellations in the zodiac. Top three most underrated creative signs. I would say the most underrated creative signs in the Zodiac is Scorpio. 
Gemini, I don't think Gemini be getting their props for how creative they are. We say all that intelligence shit. We say all that communication shit. They creative as fuck. Scorpio, Gemini, and and we could probably throw Sag in there. You know? But Sag fire. We know the fire signs is creative. We know the fire signs is creative for real. But it, it but we probably throw Libra in there too. Not even being biased. But you won't know the Scorpio and Libra's creative though, because they be on some bullshit. Libra, Libras sleep on themselves. Libras don't take as much action and they lazy. And then Scorpios just be on some behind the scenes shit, having insecurities, feeling vulnerable, connecting anything to the collective. You feel me? You want only their best friends be knowing how creative they are and shit. And Virgos. 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 Some of y'all don't even know how creative Virgos are, especially the goddamn moons. Look at all the Virgo artists that did put their music out. There's some Virgo legends in the music world. It's my Nas. I was just talking to one of my patrons today. She was talking. I just put them onto Astro Theme. If you ain't using AstroTheme.com, I don't know what you're doing, y'all. I don't know what you're doing. Co-star and all the maps, yeah, they cool, but y'all need to get on Astro Theme. That's where the G that's where the real G's is at. And she's like, oh my God, yo, Boro, thank you. Like, they got all the celebrities on this show. I'm like, hell yeah, that's my shit. I don't know what's, I don't know no celebrity page I haven't seen on that shit yet. And she's like, I've been looking at Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse is Virgoed up. Virgoed up in her chart. And she got some bangers. You feel me? Virgos ain't playing. Plies of Virgo. You, we, go, we, we could count on a hit from Plies once every, in the, Plies a hit maker. You feel me? It's all type of Virgo. I don't know why I can't even think of. A uh, uh, DMX Virgo Moon. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I think Beyonce got Virgo energy somewhere. She a Virgo rising or Libra rising? No, she a Virgo something. She a Virgo something. Wiz Khalifa. You feel me? Virgos be some creative individuals when they say fuck it. When they that's that I be just wanting every Virgo in the world to take a leap of faith and say fuck it. Especially if you got Virgo North Node. Or no, if you got Virgo South Node. If you got Pisces North Node, Virgo South Node. I'm yo, I'm really drunk. I said I'm drunk. I said Beyonce's got Virgo Sun. She a whole Virgo Sun. I'm sorry, y'all. It's been a long day. My bad, y'all. It's been a long day. This week, this week already taxing me. It's only Wednesday. It's only Wednesday. God damn. It feel like Thursday. For, it already feel like the end of the week. I don't know. I guess it's full moon energies. Everything extra exhausted. I was talking to somebody else today. They said they feel extra exhausted and shit. I'm like, yeah, I think it's just full moon week. We all tacked. That's why you got to chill on the full moon. We can't be doing too much. The moon is already close to full, so it's like the 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 a percentage of the moon shows you how much we should be reacting to a sign. So we know the moon deal with response. We know when we're looking at the moon, we doing moon magic, we following the moon transits. We want to get aligned with the sign that the moon is transiting. But if the moon is close to full, you gotta be careful. You can't be putting too much energy into it. When the moon is new, you better throw all your ideas, all your thoughts, everything. You throw, throw all them shits into the universe. Throw all them shits into the goddamn uh throw all them affirmations, everything. Throw everything that you got into the world during the new moon. And the next new moon gonna be in Leo. Alright? <laughs> Took a shot of water. Next new moon gonna be in Leo. So yeah, Scorpio Rising, I ain't playing with y'all, man. I ain't playing with y'all with this uh I'm over here, I'm over here backing y'all, saying how creative y'all are, and y'all gonna get me mad as hell if y'all don't take no initiative to at least start placing effort in how you connect yourself to the collective. Whether your knowledge and wisdom, your creative endeavors, your new business ideas, finding ways to use social media, okay? Come on, come on, Scorpio Rises. And y'all got Venus here, so y'all gonna y'all about to receive some support. Y'all about to receive some people that's that 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 are gonna encourage you to connect that some more. Some people that wanna build with you in some type of shape or form. 
You're going to gain insight with Venus Chance in the 11th house to understand how you can work something into the collective with Virgo in this house. So come on, Scorpio Rising. Don't let me down right now. Don't, don't let me down. I'd be going to bat for a lot of y'all. Don't let me down right now. All right? And last but not least, man, already start snazzy, snazzy star. That's what I like to hear. Look, your name is creative. <laughs> your name is creative. So come on, y'all. I ain't playing. Come on, y'all. Make me proud. Make me proud. And then, and then Venus is. Oh, before I move on, Venus. Well, I said this yesterday. Venus get mixy. Venus get mixy in the mayor houses because Venus like that air element. She like connecting. She like relating. She like exchanging with others. So you should be kind of excited and hyped to make new connections right now. You should be excited and hyped to bring your damn business. I don't care if you go into a beach party. You better bring them damn business cards. You better make sure you got a portable phone charger. So when your phone is close to dying at the beach and you connecting with others, you're like, now, hold on, hold on. Let me get my phone charged. This is my gram right here. Hold on. This my, is this my Instagram right here. Yeah. Go ahead. Add me. That's my business page, too. Yeah, better go invest in a portable. Uh, <laughs> better go get another backup phone, business phone. I'm not playing with y'all, Scorpio Rising. Y'all, I'm getting mad thinking about how creative, how much y'all be suppressing that shit personal. All right? So, I right, y'all, let's get it. Let's get it. Now, last but not least, all right? Last but not least, my Libra Risings. All right? Libra Risings, Virgo in the 12th house. Now, y'all know I be on y'all heads, the uh, Libra Rising. Y'all know I be on y'all. Because y'all can float a lot. Y'all can float too. And I know life ain't easy being a Libra rising. I know that. Life ain't life is not easy being a Libra rising. You you took on hell of a, a hell of a challenge coming into this realm being a Libra rising. But that lets you know you came in with some damn wisdom. You even embracing that energy, because Libra rising is everything is everything was is reverse. Got Libra in the first house. That's the Aries house. Tar Scorpio in the second house. That's the Taurus house. So y'all going through a lot of restrictions, a lot of oppositions. A lot of times you're trying to do something in this area, you're doing it the whole opposite way or receiving the whole opposite energy. You feel me? But this is once again why y'all gain so much more wisdom than other individuals. But y'all can't be feeling sorry for y'all Y'all can't be victimizing y'all Y'all got to catapult all that shit y'all been through so y'all could just blossom through all that shit. All right? So when we talk about this spectrum of the 12th house with Virgo in there, we know the 12th house deal with what? The imagination, the subconscious, your emotions, how you understand the emotions of the collective, your dreams, life after death, karma, spiritually inclined house, all right? Your fantasies, creative endeavors, all right? Your spiritual inclination, your intuition, your clairvoyance, your belief system. The 12th house is deep, but y'all got Virgo here. Y'all got Virgo here. So when it comes to your imagination, Libra Risings, when it comes to your creativity, oh man, oh man, the way that y'all could get the overthinking in this area. Oh man, the way you could look at your imagination and feel like you ain't got the resources for it. Oh man, when it comes to your dreams, looking at it like it can't be realistic with Virgo in this house. Virgo be trying to bring y'all down to reality way too goddamn much in this house. The key here in this lifetime is using Virgo. I I just po I posted something in my story today. Somebody on the first live that I did earlier today that I uploaded on YouTube. Somebody asked me, Boro, how does Virgo in the 12th house? I struggle or whatnot with Virgo in the 12th house. How do I use this? You got to make Virgo work for you. You got to make the signs work for you in these houses, guys. So when we look at that 12th house, if you know this house deals with your creativity, your imagination, all right, your subconscious your fantasies, your creative endeavors. This is one of the most creatively inclined houses in the Zodiac. You got to make Virgo schedule that shit. You got to use Virgo. Once again, we use this shit. We use all this shit. You got to make sure your Virgo influence is not overthinking you out of your imagination. It's not making you see all the hardships to working your imagination down to reality. You got to be pinpointed on what you want to do with your imagination. That's step one. In this house, Libra Risings, you have to be pinpointed on what you want to do in your with your dreams. 
What you want to do with your imagination. That's step one. Once we get that established, you use your Virgo influence to work on that. You use your Virgo influence to schedule, routine that energy. And you stay consistent doing it. You don't. This is why it's important for you to pinpoint what creative endeavor, what dream you want to bring down in the reality. Because it's mutable, so it could change too much in this house. It could change a little too much. And then you got Pisces in the sixth house. So it's like, in the house that deals with schedule and routine, you got Pisces losing his damn mind in that house. Pisces like, get me the fuck out of here. Get me the fuck out of here. I cannot deal with all this damn reality. I cannot deal with all this goddamn, all these rules. <laughs> Libra rises me feeling like their whole life is rules. <laughs> their whole life is goddamn rules struck. Man, so I, I know, I know, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. But y'all capable. All right? Once again, we all have a 12th house. We all have creativity. We all have an imagination. You cannot let Virgo be too realistic in that damn house. So now with Venus, now this, now this is the very positive thing. You know, uh, overall, with y'all Libra Risings, overall having them earth signs and them water houses, y'all got to learn to work on the emotions, work on your subconscious, and find ways to bring to make your emotions work for you in reality instead of, you know, distracting from, just having your emotions distract you from what you do in reality. Especially Libra Risings, y'all got it the toughest. So y'all will deal with so much emotional roller coaster to the point it fucks up a lot of your psyche with how y'all look at reality. Y'all can't, y'all have to apply that, you have to... Look at them situations as wisdom gained. They can't. They can't just make you ha ha OD depressed and OD crushed with the emotions. Would you say the same for Cancer in the sixth house? Now nah, that's different with Cancer in the sixth house. That's way different. That's Leo rising. That's way different. Cancer in the sixth house. The ca cancer is emotionally connected to its dreams with moon with the moon there. So this person is always trying to. It, it's, it, it has a really a. a, a, a a real soft spot for its imaginations and dreams. It feels uncomfortable when it's not dealing with connecting to the, that realm. So it could dissociate itself a lot too. That's why Leo's could be a Leo Risings could be a little delusional, okay? But Cancer in that twelfth house is water in a water house. It's gonna be connected to its imagination in some type of shape or form. It's gonna be work. It's gonna be influenced to build a connection with its uh with its twelfth house. So this the thing here uh. Libra Risings, you got Venus coming into this house. Venus loved this house. This is Venus' favorite house besides home. Besides uh, seventh house and the second house, Venus loved this house. All right? We know Venus deal with love, right? Venus deal with its pleasures, what makes it feel good, its creativity, its value system. So when you throw all of that in the 12th house, you know, this individual here. They're not going to see no limits with how they can connect to their value systems. And whatever they love and appreciate, it's in the imagination. So they feel like it's always going to be accessible. They don't see no restrictions on it. This is how Venus and Pisces, Venus and 12th house people play out. Play, play that energy out. But it could be, a, once again, this energy, Venus and the 12th house, Venus and Pisces could develop addictions, attachments quicker than anybody in the Zodiac. Quicker than anybody in the Zodiac. So they got to be careful of that. Because they got that shit is so accessible to them. All they got to do is imagine their pleasures. Imagine what they love and they manifest it. They, act, they, get, they manifest a relationship that support their bad habits. They manifest an environment that support their bad habits. Situations and circumstances that, uh, that uh, support their bad habits. But if you got positive values, positive habits, then you straight. Venus going to find support for that. So Libra Risings, question to self. What in your imagination do you value? What creative endeavors do you have do you value? What things do you daydream about do you value? You can make monumental strides with Venus transiting this house. With your ability to learn how to love, with the influence to learn how to love working on these things. But I need y'all to pinpoint this. I don't want y'all floating so much. Alright guys, I'm a Libra sun. I understand that floating energy. Remember, the sun don't deal with Libra. It's already it got a debilitation in Libra. So this is why Libras could be lazy. That's why we don't take that much action on shit. Libra sun, moon, air risings. 
Okay? So Libra Risings, I don't want y'all to float this, this season. And I'm sure y'all have been already dealing with, you know, trying to improve in certain areas. Work your chart. You feel me? Find some balance in your life. But you got Venus coming into a house that it loves to be. It's a lot of self-esteem and value and self-love to be directed towards what you want to create in this lifetime. So let's take advantage of that. As soon as y'all start taking many steps towards your dreams and imagination, right away you go manifest some motherfuckers saying they appreciate and support that. Oh, that's dope. Oh, that's creative. Universe does that, guys. Like universe, I keep telling y'all, universe don't leave you hanging. I have barely done a uh, certain career readings and whatnot, and people who really work their formula not hit me up later. Like, yo, borrow as soon. Y'all see? I, and this is not to brag. This is just the testimony. This is what it is. Every fucking astrology and whatnot, tarot reader. Y'all be we we be having testimonies. It, it is what it is. But I just posted a testimonial early today. And an individual told me as soon as they got off the, the same day, the same goddamn day, they went on Facebook Live pushing out some of the energies. I was telling them that you got to get more used to pushing out. And they automatically seen some results they never seen before. So I, the universe ain't not, is not about to leave y'all hanging. Especially in the moments when shit getting weary, you getting vulnerable. You're like, damn, like I've been putting in some time and work. Universe going to manifest something to let you know, yo, bro, keep it going. Keep it going, please. You did all this work. You built all this momentum to stop now. You gonna or your spirit just gonna fucking talk to you like that. Most of the time, universe don't gotta do that to you because your spirit gonna be like motherfucker. <laughs> we did not work on this for six months to stop now. Your spirit just gonna tell you that shit by itself. So Libra rises. This is a chance to catapult some things in your imagination. Like, fuck the daydreaming. We got to get active now. Venus here to make that shit happen. Venus trying to find her pleasures in working on her creativity, working on the things that she's daydreaming. Bro, I've had momentum for years and still nothing. You jumped in the body to live life, bro. So what you going to stop for? You still living life. You still breathing. Keep it going. Keep it going. Some shit take years. Some shit, some shit ain't overnight. Enjoy the grind. We have to learn to enjoy the marathon. We be racing too much. We be having a racing mentality with marathon, marathon-like uh, 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 endeavors. You have to know when you start something. Is this gonna be something that is you? You have to psych yourself up to know when you start things. This may take a minute, and I'm good with that because this is what I want. I jumped in the body to create shit and I know this is what I want to initiate and bring into reality right now. So it, it is what it is. We got to make sacrifices, guys. Some shit is not, is not no sweet way to say it. It's not no sweet way to say some shit at times, guys. You got to bleed for your shit sometimes. You got to put in blood, sweat, and tears for your shit sometimes. Time's running out though. I don't got time, patience. It depends. It depends what you're working on, bro. It, it, like you, that's general talk. So I don't know if you want to DM me and get a little bit more specific, and we get into some energies or something. But like you know, I, I just me personally, bro. If you've been watching me for a minute, you know I kind of don't do the victim energy, and you know I don't do the. I, I believe every spirit can work something for themselves in reality. That's just me. That is just me. That's just me. Okay. Now, there's motherfuckers out here that be 60 years old thinking they could still make the NBA. Nigga, they need to sit the fuck down. Some people be in illusions. Some people just be in illusions. Sometimes you need to, sometimes there's things that you need to transform and you stick in the one, you working, you so, you see, sometimes that's another thing. This is another thing about investing time into things. And this is the last thing I'm going to say and I'm, I'm out of here, guys, but. We be so locked in and wanting things to work the way we want them to work instead of learning how to be more flexible, adaptable, change things up, and allow universe to help us cultivate things. Sometimes universe be trying to work things into our life, but we so stuck to having something work this way. And universe be like, oh, this motherfucker is hard. I, I, like, I love the devotion. I love the hard work. But damn, can I'm trying to help. I've been trying to send you this signal so we could do things this way because it's going to blossom way more. So we got to learn to move with the influences. You got to learn to be open to life to what it's trying to tell you when it's coming to navigating certain things. 
For me, ever since I've evolved my spirit, the simplest shit has become harder than it should be. Hey, man. God gives his, God gives his strongest fights, his hardest fights to the strongest soldiers. I, I got to I'm sorry. When you're dealing with me, I got to come back for all that shit, bro. So I'm annoying. <laughs> I'm annoying on that when it comes to shit like this. You don't want to. I'm not. I don't. I'm not that sweet with just you know catering to our feelings and whatnot. Not saying I'm not compassionate in that way, but there's I'm I'm me where 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 I'm at spiritually. I just know that this world is our oyster. That's the thing. Where I'm at spiritually, I just two two hundred and percent know the physical realm don't rule shit. As a spirit, we 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 govern this shit. So we can let the physical realm bully us or we can move, we can manipulate this shit. It's, it's, it's which side you want to be on. All right. That's my mentality. That's what I wholeheartedly believe. So, you know, I, it's just hard for me to, you know, align with that concept. But like I said, bro, you know, if you want to holler at me, DM me on a serious tip. We talk about certain things, bro. You feel me? Then we could do that. You feel me, family? I'm here to help. But the help they ain't going to sound sweet all the time. The, the help going to be real. <laughs> the help going to be real. All right, family? So y'all already know what it is, man. Y'all make sure we got the moon in Capricorn right now. Y'all prioritize, get your to-do list as we go into tomorrow. All right, we're going to talk some more about this full moon approaching in. We one sign away from it now. Leo season's right around the corner. So we're about to end the week with a bunch of... And that's another reason. You a cap moon. Life is hard, bro. <laughs> Life is hard as a cat moon. <laughs> you got to embrace it. Look, get off this live and look what I just posted for the moon signs. And look what I, and look at the cat moon post. All right, go look at that. All right, guys. So y'all make sure y'all jump into y'all to-do list, prioritize, understand what's responsibility for the rest of the week. We about to deal with a shift of energies for the week. We just had a super shift today with the moon going into cat, Venus going into Virgo. Okay, so uh, with the full moon and Aquarius and all that shit going into the rest of the week. Yeah, we're dealing with some shit this weekend, guys. And we stay spiritually prepped by making sure we're taking care of responsibilities and we knowing what deserves our time and what serious matters. What is a priority? Clinging on to people, places and things that ain't a fucking priority is going to have us all fucked up in the game right now. All right, guys. Peace, fam.